Hello, overclockers. I'm 8-Pack, the king of overclocking, and in fact, the king of pretty much everything. I know you've tuned in today to YouTube to only watch me, and I don't blame you. Right, on to the purpose of this video. In this video, we're going to cover the new X870E motherboards. And within this video, I'm going to cover how these perform on the new 9950X. Well, it's not that new, is it? It's a month old, but this is my video on it, and of course, the definitive guide. And within the video, we're obviously going to cover, as usual, stock performance, PBO tuning, and overclocking. And also, finally, we're going to cover how to tune your memory modules to get the best out of the CPU, and what extra performance can be gained by doing that. So, all that being said, let's dive into it. The 9950X CPU. Let's discuss a bit about it. This CPU, just like the other 9th gen, if you like, AMD CPUs is Granite Ridge Zen 5 architecture. This particular model, the 9950X, has 16 cores and 32 threads, which is exactly the same as the 7950X from the previous generation. The base clock on this CPU is 4.3 gigahertz with a single core turbo of up to 5.7 gigahertz. Now I've noticed in testing that that needs an asterisk next to it really because sometimes it's more than one core, could be two, three or even four cores that reaches 5.7 gigahertz given the different parameters that you set within the motherboard. These CPUs obviously go uh, straight into the AM5 socket that's been out for a while and AMD have promised to support up to 2027. So, that being said about the CPU, let's now move on to the X870E motherboards. Like I said, the ones I've used for testing are the ASRock Tai Chi and the Asus Hero next to me on the desk. These boards have a new BIOS which is optimised towards the Zen 5 core architecture and therefore it's plug and play immediately. These motherboards on X870E also have higher AMD uh, Expo memory speeds supported. Uh, obviously the CPU natively supports up to 5600 megahertz, but these boards, uh, obviously not guaranteed, but overclocked conditions can now do 8000 megahertz, no problem. These motherboards have all the CPU uh, premium overclocking features. So you've got normal PBO, you've got PBO2 uh, with offsets, you've got static overclocks, uh, you've got memory overclocking, uh, and also you've got a uh, switcher overclocks, which means you can combine static and PBO type tuning to get the best of both worlds. These boards also have a good array of PCI Express Gen 5 support, and obviously they need this now with the GPU switching uh, to G PCI Gen 5, and obviously people are demanding uh, more speed from the NVMe drives, which Gen 5 will offer. These boards come as standard with USB 4 now, which of course was available on X670E, but through an add-on chip. Now these are built into the specification of the boards and therefore has to be supported. This means that we have 40 gig per second throughput uh, and we have Thunderbolt compatibility. If you're a gamer, some of these extra features may not be that useful to you. For example, you may not need Thunderbolt, might not need USB 4 even, and you may not even want to go to the extra expense of using NVMe 5 drives. However, for the professional, all of these things are indeed useful and can be useful, especially the content creator who's shifting a lot of the data around at once. In addition to the X870E and X870 motherboards, eventually, of course, we'll get B850 and B840 chipsets, which will serve the mainstream, or indeed the peasants. Let's jump in what, to what my test systems were for the, all the CPU testing that I did. Basically, I used the motherboards we have in front of me, the Tai Chi and the Hero. I used the latest Windows 11 as far as software goes, with all the latest uh, updates in terms of um, drivers, uh, chipset drivers and so on and so on to optimize for the new AMD CPUs. So if you remember on launch, uh, Windows Scheduler wasn't working very well with the new CPUs. So I obviously wanted to make sure in this case I had the correct scheduler and the correct update. So all that was updated, including GPU drivers. I also uh, used the 4090 uh, GPU, exactly the same model as I've done all my other testing on. 
The CPU cooler for this was a 360 AIO uh, by EK. Uh, the memory in this test initially started off as being the Corsair 5600 uh, C30 kits for what was my non-tuned memory profiles, if you like. And then I shifted from them to G-Scale uh, 6000 megahertz C30 kits for my tuned memory profiles. That memory stuff we'll uh, look into a bit later. Okay, so stock performance when we're comparing the 7750X with the 9950X in terms of cooling and power draw first. Obviously the 9950X has architectural improvements that allow for less power draw. And what we saw, uh, the power draw of the 9950X was 200 watts versus a 231 watts power draw on the 7950X. That meant that the newer CPU, the 9950X, had a 15% less power draw overall. The max temperatures of stock on the 360mm AIO uh, on the 9950X, when running our blender tests for over an hour, was 78 degrees C on the 9950X versus 96C on the 7950X. So this was a saving of 23% uh, in terms of cooler running temperatures on exactly the same cooler with the exactly same team and exactly the same mount. This can explain you know, the difference in power draw was 15%, but the difference in temperatures is 23%. Obviously shows that the new CPU IHS is also mounted better to the dies and is slicking away the heat from the dies a little bit better than the previous generation. The cooling I would uh, suggest that you use as a minimum with this particular uh, CPU is actually a 360 millimeter AIO, and especially, obviously, if you plan to overclock or do any sort of PBO2 tuning, this kind of thing, you're better with extra cooling. And in fact, if it's possible you can stretch to it and you already have a custom cooling loop, I would uh, add a custom water cooling block just to get the maximum performance potential out of your investment in the CPU. So, what were the stock results of the 9950X when compared to the 7950X through my suite of benchmarks? Yes, I don't run games, so don't bother typing anything about game results in the comments below. Both, of course, were allowed to just boost to their maximum clock speed that they would under absolute stock with no adjustments in the BIOS. The newer CPU uh, boosted to 5.7 gigahertz. The older CPU, managed 5.6 gigahertz as a maximum clock frequency under stock. So, what were the actual improvements? 3D Mark Firestrike Physics, I saw a 7.8% improvement on the new CPU. 3D Mark CPU Profile, I saw a 3.7% improvement on the new CPU. Cinebench R23 Multicore, an 8% improvement. Cinebench R23 Single Core, 14% improvement. Cinebench R24 Multicore, a 9.7% improvement and superposition at 1080p, a 16.8% improvement. Overall, between these benchmarks, we saw an increase of around 10% generation on generation when comparing the 9950X to the 7950X. All of this, of course, was while using uh, less power and creating less heat, which in my book is a decent generational step forward in terms of uh, basically every metric that we use to compare these CPUs. So power draw is better, uh, temperatures and thermal performance is better, overall performance in everything that I throw at it is better, and interestingly, the performance metrics in terms of gaming, which in this one would be the superposition 1080p, would get 16.8% improvement, which is a really, really solid result for you gamers out there. So that's all the boring stock stuff out of the way. Now let's look at the overclocking. And as usual, to look at overclocking, I decided to make a manual overclock profile with static overclocking and a PBO2 profile, which is obviously dynamic overclocking. The PBO2 profile on these CPUs had a 3x scaling factor, a negative curve of around minus 12, and a negative offset of between minus 0.07 volts and minus 0.05 volts just for you nerds who want to copy exactly what I'm doing. Now, let's look at what those uh, different profiles gave us in terms of results. The PBO2 profile, that maxed out at around 5.9 gigahertz, uh, but during my benchmarks, in terms of temperature, it maxed out at 95C and pulled 295 watts. In terms of PBO2 versus stock, what were the actual improvements for this tuning that we did? 
3 d Mark Five Strike Physics had a massive 0.6% improvement. Uh, 3D Mark CPU Profile had 8.8%. Cinebench R23 had 5.4%. Cinebench Single Core had zero improvement at all. Wow. Cinebench R24 Multicore had 2.3% improvement. Superposition 1080p, 0.5% improvement. Corona 1.3 had actually no improvement at all again. Uh, our Blender rendering test, which usually lasts around an hour, had 4.9% improvement. So the average improvement across all these tests that I ran uh, after doing PBO2 was around 3.7%. I mean, it's free performance, so not a bad result, but again, I wouldn't say an amazing result for all the testing that you have to do to uh, make sure that PBO2 is indeed stable. What was the improvement across my benchmark suite then in the manual overclocking? Well, 3D Mark Fire Strike uh, physics this time improved 1.12%. 3D Mark CPU profile was up 14.6%. Cinebench R23 multi core was up 13.2%, but the single core result was up nothing at all. Cinebench R24 multi core was up 7.4%. Superposition 1080p was up nothing at all. Corona 1.3 was up uh, 6%. And Blender rendering was up 12.6%. So I guess overall you can say on this one, uh, the static overclock gave you a 7% improvement. So almost double what the PBO2 showed us. I guess this improvement can be explained on the multi-core profile because on PBO2, you're getting the frequency drop in when you're using massively multi-core stuff to way below 5.3 uh, gigahertz. Whereas on the static overclock, every core is actually at 5350 megahertz throughout every test. So you're, you're benefiting uh, there from clock speed versus any other benefits from PBO2 because the clock frequency is dropping right down under PBO2 when you're loading up every single core so hard. The manual overclock uh, was 5350 megahertz uh, and that maxed out at 96C and pulled a total of 304 watts. Now, this which profile you choose will probably depend on what workloads you're doing. So if you're doing heavy rendering or uh, this kind of workload, which is very multi-core, the manual overclock uh, will yield you better results. If you're more of a gamer who's using less than the full core count or maybe just using six to eight cores, then PBO2 will generally yield uh, better results. With both of these profiles, basically you've got a 50% more power draw to get the extra performance. How, and also, obviously, temps are much higher, uh, been all the way up to as, as high as 95 and 96 uh, degrees C. So you have to make sure you have, have the top tier of cooling uh, to get really good performance out of these type of tuning. So, unlike my usual 8-pack reviews, this time we're going to look also at some memory tuning. I'm going to do this because my 9950X video is a bit late. And I obviously want to give you guys a few tidbits on how you can get a bit more out of these CPUs because they are actually really good for tuning memory timings. But after a lot of experimentation, you don't get massive improvements, but you certainly do get some. So the kits I used for the tuning profile of this, uh, on this memory testing were G-Skill, uh, both 32 gig and 64 gig capacity, obviously two by 16 or two by 32 gig, 6,000 megahertz C30 kits uh, as stock. Now, I chose uh, these kits and that frequency because we already tested in a previous video of mine what's the most efficient speed on these CPUs to give you the best performance. And we discovered that was already 6,000 megahertz. So basically I got these kits uh, and then I tuned all the timings within the kits at 6,000 megahertz to give us the best performance. I have to say, whilst tuning these kits, these motherboards are absolutely excellent and really did respond to all the settings I put in. And I did obviously, as I was pushing the kits harder and harder, see some instability in the memory, but, but that was nothing to do with the motherboards at all. And uh, adjusting those timings did again bring the memory back to stability. And all the memory kits I did try in these motherboards, even higher capacity kits than uh, 64 gig, in fact, I tried all the way up to 192 gig kits, were all working well and the motherboards were running them stably within the capacity of the CPU or the IMC capability of the CPU. And I do believe that the X870E motherboards are indeed better for tuning memory than the predecessors. So for all this memory testing, I used my PBO2 profile on the motherboards. 
I did this so that each test would complete a little bit faster, to be honest. Uh, and I wanted to see what memory tuning plus PBO would give in terms of results. Given all these uh, tweaks that I did to the memory, both the secondary and the tertiary timings, refresh rates, uh, and all the sub timings, what were indeed the improvements from running these G-Skill kits uh, at stock voltage, I have to say, I didn't adjust the voltage, I just stock voltage, but I did change up pretty much all the timings. Let's just look at what the performance gains were. On R23, for example, uh, Cinebench R23, we had a 1.4% improvement. Or on R23 uh, Multicore, we had a 1.6% improvement. On R24, we had a 3.7% improvement. Corona Bench, we had 3% faster. Blender Render was 2.8% faster. 3D Mark CPU Profile was 2.4% faster. Firestrike Graphics was 0.45% faster. Firestrike Physics, was 3.3% faster. Superposition at 1080p was 0.9% faster. So the average improvement of memory testing across the entire benchmarks is 2.2% improvement. And if you look at the rendering style benchmarks, such as R24 and Blender Render, uh, we see over 3% and in fact as high as 3.7% improvement. So something definitely worth doing if you're running a test for over an hour, you know, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes faster uh, for your time is, is, is a pretty decent improvement. Now, of course, if you, if you add this memory improvement on top of PBO tuning, we've then got a 5.9% uh, improvement on average, which is better than stock 9950X. Uh, and this is a full 12.2% better than on the previous generation of 7950X. So if you've got the cooling and the power, it is worth uh, pushing the CPUs a little bit extra to get the better performance out of them. Especially if you want to get the highest frame rates in your games or indeed complete your rendering tasks or any other such multi-core task as fast as possible and then move on to the next workstation task. So, what's my conclusion on the motherboards and the 9950X? My experience with these two motherboards here on the desk was actually absolutely excellent. I had no problem with them running high memory capacity, low latency memory, changing the timings, tuning with PBO, tuning with static overclocking, tuning with uh, you know, a switcher type overclock where you get the best out of both worlds. Both behaved uh, very well uh, across every single benchmark and in terms of stability. So I can recommend both these boards. The CPU, I believe, is a solid leap when you consider the performance of the last generation compared to this. So generation on generation, it's a good solid improvement. And it does offer the tweaker uh, a lot of opportunities to tweak the memory and tweak all the different overclocking settings that you get within these motherboards. So following that conclusion, you can tell I'm going to be using both of these motherboards in 8-pack and infinite systems moving forward. The Chai Chi here on my left is going to be going into an infinite sanctuary system and the Hero on my right is going to be going into the 8-pack cryocube system. Of course, in, with both of those systems we'll have options of CPUs, the 9950X that you, you can uh, see in the review here, or we'll be uh, using the 9900X or indeed the new X3D chips when they eventually come out if people want to really focus solely on gaming. As well as putting these in our systems, we will be also making upgrade bundles with these CPUs and indeed that memory combination and that memory timings. So if you want us to do all the hard work for you and you just install this as a bundle into your system with all the 8-pack enhancements that I've discussed in the video, please do buy the bundles and those will be linked in the description below. Right, finally and as always, please don't like the video, don't subscribe to our channel, don't like my socials or indeed any of Overclocker's socials. But as usual, please do try to check out one of my other videos, such as the one on 96 core overclocking or the other 9th gen series CPUs or indeed how cool 8-pack is in general.